system, Ubuntu gives a hint on where GNU switches come from. And it comes from the Core Utils program, which is something you can install on your BSD system if you miss the GNU style switches. One of the things um, that we tend to appreciate in the BSD world is very good documentation. And we see this even in the man pages. So in this slide, we have the ifconfig man page from both a FreeBSD and an Ubuntu system. And one of the things we'll find on almost every BSD man page is it will always have an example section that shows you how to actually use the utility. And you'll notice this is something that we typically don't get on a Linux system. So in this example for ifconfig, the BSD system has several pages worth of examples, and there are no examples for the Ubuntu command. So those are some of the obvious differences. A lot of the differences are obvious because they actually happen uh, in the release engineering process. And release engineering can make a big difference in the user experience of an operating system. So if we take a look at one of the differences between BSD and Linux, is BSD is a complete operating system, whereas Linux is a kernel, and then the distribution provides your user land, your installation utility, and your software management programs. Being a complete operating system um, has several advantages. One is you end up with one release team that handles security advisories, and you also uh, end up with a less likelihood of incompatible libraries. So because the operating system and the user land are all compiled at the same time, uh, they find out very quickly if there's any incompatibilities. Another difference has to do with the different licenses that the BSD and Linux um, systems use. So you may have heard that Linux uses the GPL, which contains copyleft clauses. What this means and from an engineering perspective is often drivers uh, can't be compiled into the kernel because of the copyleft clause. What we find in BSD operating systems is we don't have any copyleft clauses, so the drivers are always built into the operating system. So it's very rare that you have to install or go out looking for a hardware driver. The BSD projects also have a high bus factor, and a bus factor is um, what would the damage to an open source project be if uh, its main developers uh, we're on a bus that, say, got hit by a train. So when we're dealing with the Linux kernel itself, Linux, it's Linux uh, Torvalds is basically the bus factor. If something happens to Linux, a lot of people speculate what will happen to Linux. Uh, the BSD projects have hundreds of people that work on the operating system, so much higher bus factor. Another thing we get out of the release engineering is we have a consistent separation between the operating system and third-party uh, software. And we also have a separation between BSD license code and GPL code. This is important if um, you are creating products uh, based on BSD or BSD. If GPL licensing is an issue for your product, you can just easily remove the GPL code. Now, while each of the BSD projects has a separate focus, the communities themselves interact with each other and share ideas and code. And one of the things uh, that's common to their release engineering projects uh, processes is that any developer uh, has the ability to earn a commit bit or the ability to actually have his code uh, put into the operating system. And if we just take a quick look at the numbers, the FreeBSD project has 408 developers who have commit bits. NetBSD has 259. 
OpenBSD has 122, and Linux has one committer. Now that doesn't mean that Linus is the only person who writes code for Linux, but uh, he's the only one who can actually commit code to make sure the changes go into the kernel. The principles used by the BSD projects reflect their academic roots. So for example, uh, each of the projects has always had a code repository from the very first day that the project launched. And you can even trace original BSD code back to the Berkeley days. The projects themselves don't really have leaders. Instead, they have well-defined release engineering, security, and doc teams. So for most of the BSD projects, you'd probably be hard-pressed to name any of the developers. But there are many developers working together. The process itself, uh, development occurs on a branch that's called current. And that is frozen before um, it be turns into a release. Every night there are build farms that will build the operating system and all of the applications. And this helps to ensure that upgrades and installs don't result in library incompatibilities. Meaning that if you're using one of the released operating systems, it is definitely safe to use in a production environment. And uh, as part of the release engineering process, documentation is considered as important as code. So one of the things that happens when a release is frozen uh, for preparation is uh, the documentation is being made up to date. If we look at some of the features unique to BSD, uh, again, you can research the slides yourself because there's quite a bit of uh, information in them. And some of these features may be of interest to you. So I'll just name off some of these. So um, all of the BSDs use something known as secure levels, where you can set different policies for the security of the system. FreeBSD uses something known as jails, which provides virtualized environments for running basically many operating systems on one host. NetBSD, because of its uh, portability, provides something known as build.sh, which allows you to cross-compile across different architectures. One of the things that NetBSD developed and all of the BSD support is a cross-platform package management system called PackageSource. So if you're in an environment where you have a mix of BSD systems, Linux systems, other Unix systems, you can use one package management system. PCBSD has its own software management system, which allows for one-click installing, meaning you don't have to understand uh, installation uh, in order to install software. One of the cool features uh, we get that deals with security is called VUXML, and you'll get that on free and open BSD. On systems running package source, we get something similar known as audit packages. And this will let you know if there are any outstanding security vulnerabilities for any of the third-party software that you've installed. NetBSD has something known as the Verexec file integrity subsystem, uh, which can, uh, it's basically a tripwire that's built into the kernel itself. All of the BSDs provide something known as binary emulation. And that means you can take a Linux binary, a Solaris binary, a SCO binary, and run it on a BSD system, and it will just work. Uh, you may have heard of ZFS and DTrace. Uh, both of these are now available with FreeBSD. They're built right in. OpenBSD has come up with an open redundancy protocol uh, called CARP. You may have heard of BSM, which is a auditing framework. This is now built into FreeBSD. For quality of service, we have a protocol called Alt-Q. 
And Dragonfly is developing a new high availability file system called Hammer, which is starting to show good progress. Uh, in this last slide, I'll leave you with some references if you want to uh, get more information about BSDs. And that was some of the differences between BSD and Linux.